Nathanson, I'm child therapist and founder of confidentchildren.co.uk. Today I'd like to discuss with you why it's so important that parents and schools work together when supporting a child to overcome selective mutism. Now, the reason why this collaboration is so important is because, as we already know, selective mutism is very complex and children are able to talk freely in some situations like home and they're unable to verbalise in other situations such as school. So the parents can be like a bridge between the verbal environment and the non-verbal environment. So if we think about what's the most effective way for the child with selective mutism to talk at school, and often that involves the parent coming into school, physically coming into school and holding sessions with the child, enabling the child to verbalise with their parent. Now, the child often feels relaxed with their parent, so they're able to talk with their parent, be it either in the class environment or sometimes in an intervention room. So that's the first goal. We want to just get the child talking with, at school. And the, the easiest way to do that is if the parent actually comes into school. So often um, schools and parents think it's slightly unusual that the, the parent is <laughs> coming into school. And uh, because that's often not the case with children with other needs. However, we know that this is the most effective way to get the child talking. The child feels comfortable with their parent. So if we can get the parent into school, then we get the child talking to the parent in the school environment, and this will get the ball rolling. So I advise that parents go into school frequently, several times per week, ideally, um, to enable the child to start to verbalise within this this environment. So once the child is talking freely to the parent at school, in all locations at school, so the classroom, the playground, the dinner hall, etc., um, the parent can slide in a key worker at school. Um, so then the child will start to talk to the key worker within these sessions, and then the parent will start to slide up. So as you can see, the parent is really imperative to, to the whole program, at least at the start. And once they're able to verbalise in all locations, we can then start to hand over this role um, of the talking partner to a school-based key worker, and then the parent is no longer needed to, to come in. Um, but at the start, it really does help um, the programme to move at a quicker pace. I'd just like to add that even though I'm saying that it's optimal that parents come into school and work with the child, it's imperative that we think about how the child will feel in this situation because some children especially older children wouldn't like their parents coming into school so um, it's really important that we think about how the child will respond and how they'll feel about it because if it's going to add to their anxiety then it will just do more harm than good so um, if you, it's important to ask the child how, how would you feel if mommy came to school and played some games with you for example and if um, if they are a bit unsure about it, maybe it would be good to come in after school once the other children have gone home. That might be a way to get around the situation. Um, or alternatively, perhaps uh, the teacher can come to the home to do a home visit and that can be like a bridge between home and school. So um, it's, I just want to say that it's really important that we think about the child's perspective, that is the top of the list, and um, to decide whether they would feel comfortable with this and if not then we need to think of ways that we can work around this. Okay I hope that was helpful. Please like the Confident Children Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.